Hey everyone, John here from the Castle Spirit Podcast, and today we have back on the show Dustin McIntyre, the owner of Gatku and Chris Pole Spears, for part two of how to build your own pole spear. Today he's going to cover, you know, the design considerations you need to be thinking about, including negative buoyancy, band selection, and a whole bunch more. But before we get started, if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to the podcast so you never miss a future episode. Now, please welcome back Dustin McIntyre. So what else do you want to consider when building this thing? So how heavy it's going to be would be one of them. Buoyancy. Uh, I would advise uh, making something that's going that's going to be negatively buoyant, something that's going to sink. You're just going to be dealing with less forces that are, that are going to be against you when trying to track fish. Balance. Yeah, kind of, kind of an important thing, kind of less important than most people make it out to be. Balance is one of those things that, you know, you feel it out of the water. It's going to be a whole lot different in the water. Um, it doesn't have to be perfectly balanced where your hand is or where your grip is. It just needs to be comfortable to be able to swing around in the water and track fish with. You know, if it's something that's really butt heavy, you know, then the rear section is ex- extremely hard to move around with your wrist. It might not make it very user friendly. So keep that in mind. Okay, so let's talk about your mass and your bands, because those two are going to have a very important relationship here. Uh, at the top of my head, I think the Gatku might be around three pounds. Some of the longer spears are about three pounds. And you might, I mean, once you start adding adding additional weight to that, um, your, your, your band, band stretch, band power required goes up significantly. Aerodynamics is a, is a really big thing. Um, my philosophy is less is more when it comes to bells and whistles on a pole spear, uh, especially with the grip. When you put a grip on, um, just be careful because the more grip that you you add to the spear, you're creating more surface friction in the water, or, or, you know, it's more fluid friction, which is going to just slow it down. So the more aerodynamic you can make the spear, the better. There's a lot of people who they'll they'll take one of my spears and they'll modify it and they'll wonder why it's so slow. It's because they it looks like they put a pool noodle around it, you know, and it's like, well, of course it's going to go slower when you increase the diameter times 500%. So, um, so just keep those things in mind. The, the more things you add to it, the, the slower it will become, uh, not just in theory, it's a fact. So speed for most people, this is, this is a big deal for them. They want something to be fast to go after the fish that, the, especially the smaller fish. It's the smaller fish that where where they're, they're more agile. They can move a lot faster, and you kind of need a Ferrari. So you got to find out once you construct your spear, whether it's heavy or light, what band, what band stretch, what band strength you're going to need. But first, you got to decide what what type of band you're going to be using. Okay, for, for the most part. Pole spears are using what's called what we call in the industry is gum rubber. It's a latex rubber, usually big bore, um, which means it has a big ID, as opposed to like a spear gun rubber. It has a very small ID, and a, and you know like a half inch or nine sixteenths or or five eighths OD. Um, pole spear rubber, it's a little bit gummier, um, and uh, it, it it stretches a little bit easier. Right. Uh, obviously, it needs to be a little bit easier. You're you're holding it loaded with one hand. So, um, on the Gakus, we use uh, on the six, seven, and eight footers. We use a standard pole spear rubber. Uh, it's black, three eighths diameter. It's actually a one eighth bore, which means it's one eighth wall rubber tubing. Okay. And then uh, we move up from there to a little bit bigger size. It's a little instead of three eighths diameter, moves up to like a seven sixteenths. Okay, for the nine foot and ten foot, and then um, for the Crist product line, remember they're much much bigger, so they're going to require a much heavier band. There's a half inch band that I use, and um, I believe it's like a it's a bigger bore, maybe a quarter inch bore, something like that. Probably this is going to be something you're going to want to buy, purchase from your dive shop because they're going to buy it in bulk. You don't want to have to buy this from a rubber supplier. Trust me, the, the minimum order is like three or four hundred dollars sometimes so buy it in smaller amounts from your local dive shop support them or your other alternative of course is to ask somebody like me you know give me tell me what your where your stretch is from the rear end to where your grip would be and uh, the approximate weight of your spear and i might be able to just make you a custom one you know if you were to order something through the, through the website and i'd, I'd uh, be able to 
make a custom one for that for that spear of yours. So a couple different options there for you. Band construction is very important too. You don't want those to fail. So um, make sure you're you're tying your knots well. If you, make sure you learn a constrictor knot if you don't know it already. Also with band construction, you're, for the wishbone material, uh, you're going to be using usually a Dyneema. You want to make sure that the knots that you're tying on the end are big enough. If you're using a big bore latex tubing and your knots not if and the knot that you're tying on the end of your wishbone is not large enough, um, it might be kind of hard to constrict around that wishbone um, and it, it may slide out. So sometimes I'll double it up. I'll double back the Dyneema and tie an extra big knot on both ends on some of the really big bore rubbers. That's sometimes a good idea. You, it's, it's better to go overboard on that knot that slides into the rubber than to underdo it just because you don't, you don't want that to fail on you. Kind of a rule of thumb for bands is that you want to stretch it out three to 400% um, from the original from the original band once it's taut. So if you were to have a, let's say the loop, let's say it's 24 inches of rubber, something like that, plus or minus, and then the loop that you create with that band is one foot, you would want to stretch that out in a loaded position, like somewhere between three to four feet, right? In order to use the potential energy of that, of that rubber. Okay, let's talk about how to test your band pull in pounds. Um, larger spears might require, like I said, 50, 60, 70, 80. I have... The Zeus spears, which um, some people requested to go 90 pounds. You got to make sure the spear can withstand that, all, all of that strain. That's another important factor. Don't turn it into a, a candy cane. <laughs> now, I'm, I'm a little bit of a min minimalist here, too, when it comes to band pull. Um, if the Gatku is a Ferrari at 30 pounds, why, why fix it if it ain't broke, right? So... Not to mention, you're, there's going to be more strain on your hands, more cramping, and it's going to it's going to cut down on your breath hold. So, less is more on band pull if you can get away with it. One way to measure your pull, uh, that is uh, your your band pull, is with a spring scale. You can kind of put your band together. You don't even have to put it on the pole spear because it'd be kind of dangerous to to measure it while it's on the pole spear with a spring. But you can kind of tie it off, whatever, to a vice or something or to a workbench. Attach a spring scale to it, to it. Um, figure out how long you're anticipating pulling that along the pole spear, pull it that distance while it's attached to the spring scale, and you'll be able to measure how many pounds of pull that band is capable of while being, while being held at that, at that distance, if that makes sense. Um, it's about 30 pounds of pull for a three pound spear. And there's other factors that, that will determine if that's enough or not. Right. Um, go to four or five pound spear, you're probably going to increase it to 50 to 70 pounds of pool of draw. So add girth, you're going to need even more. And like I said, gizmos are usually bad. So just uh, keep it simple. Less is more. My my personal rule when redesigning the what I call the Ferrari of spears, the Gatku product line, um, is if I make an adaptation or a modification to the design, is it still a Ferrari? I'm asking myself. Did this just change the speed? Was it worth the change? And sometimes I have to go back and say, yep, that slowed it down. Let's do something different. And so, you, like I said earlier, you can't have a Ferrari and a Dodge truck at the same time. Two different machines, two different tools, two different purposes. And another analogy I make all the time when Gatku customers ask me if I can create a Gatku that breaks down and folds up into their pocket or something is I, I say, you could have either convenience or you can have performance, but you can't have both usually, right? Uh, so the analogy is you would never you would never put a trailer hitch on a Ferrari, right? You wouldn't sacrifice the performance for the convenience of being able to tow something behind it. That's that'd be silly. So likewise, you add more bells and whistles or more connections to your pole spear. It's going to make it heavier. It's going to make it slower. Um, it's now a different tool. It's now it's it's now that truck that's designed to tow something instead of the Ferrari that's designed to go fast, right? So you have to kind of decide that from the get-go. Are you going to go light? Are you going to go heavy? Well, that does it for this episode of the podcast. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks, Dustin, for sharing your insights on what goes into making a pole spear. We have one more episode with Dustin about homemade pole spear design, and that's coming in the next couple of days. Be sure to stay tuned for that. If you've started your own pole spear, email me at john, J-O-N, at castandspear.com and fill me in. I would love to follow along. I have my initial drawings done. I'm going to make one out of wood and metal. 
and hopefully document and share it with you. So stay tuned for those videos in the next month or so. And if you could do me a huge favor, if you could screenshot your podcast app and text it to a few of your fishing buddies, that would help spread the word. And better yet, share it on social media, maybe Instagram or Facebook, and tag at Cast and Spear so I can follow along on all your fishing adventures. I would love to see what you guys are up to. All right, keep those lines tight. See ya.